Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, the resource to help you navigate the world of insurance. There is a lot of misunderstanding about what insurance is and what insurance isn't. Let me help you demystify insurance and have some fun while we're at it. Informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Remember, if you miss any part of the show, you can catch a replay on YouTube or any podcast aggregator of your choice. That could be Apple Podcasts, that could be Google Podcasts, that could be on your Amazon Alexa, it could be on TuneIn, it could be on iHeartRadio. We are everywhere and we are loving what we're doing and we're loving talking to you. Remember, If you have any questions, just dial pound 250, keyword insurance, and that'll connect you right over to someone that can help you right away. And without further ado, let us get started. Today, what I want to talk about are some factors that are changing the auto insurance market. Things that are making our auto insurance premiums higher. Because let's face it, unless you're living under a rock you realize that your auto insurance premium has been going up and you might, you just might, be wondering why that's the case. So let me give you a little bit of information about things that will actually have an impact on your auto insurance premium. And on top of it, I'll give you an idea of what some of the things are that are going on that are increasing those rates and what we can do about it. The number one factor to consider when you're thinking about what you're paying for your auto insurance is your age and your driving experience. Now, this makes sense. We know that a 16-year-old has less driving experience and therefore is more likely to have an accident, let's say, or a ticket. It's simply a matter of experience. So younger drivers who typically have less experience should be expecting to pay more for auto insurance. It, It doesn't make us happy, But, and it is a catch 21, right? I mean, is it catch 21 or catch 22? Wow, my brain is half gone today. Anyway, it's a catch because you need the experience in order to have the lower rate, but you have to have no experience or low experience and pay those premiums and get the get-go. So keep in mind that younger drivers and drivers with less driving experience are going to be paying more for auto insurance. Another factor does have to do with the vehicle that you're driving. Now, remember, this only has to do with the fact that you might be driving a vehicle that is expensive. So yes, if you're driving a brand new Tesla, it is going to cost more money than, let's say, if you're driving a 10-year-old Toyota. We'll talk a little bit more about that in detail later. Another factor that impacts your auto insurance is your usage. Now, what does usage mean? Well, do you just drive up and back to the market and you work from home? Or are you a salesman? Do you drive to multiple sites every day for sales appointments? Do you just drive up and back to work? These are all different categories that can have an impact on what your insurance premium pays since it has an impact on the number of miles you drive. Now, the the number of miles you drive is a major factor that insurance companies look at when they're determining your premium, which again, totally legit. Someone that drives 10 or 15,000 miles a year should pay more in auto insurance than someone who drives three or 4,000 because let's face it, they're on the road. The likelihood of them having an accident certainly is higher than someone who's driving less. So we know that driving record, we know that how often you drive and how you drive has an impact on your auto insurance premium. What about tickets and accidents? Well, that's a big one. Tickets and accidents will have an impact on what you're paying for auto insurance. And again, this makes sense. Someone that has a speeding ticket is statistically more likely to have an accident. It's just a fact. It's statistically proven over and over and over again. And someone that has an act- that has actually had an accident, they, of course, unfortunately, are likely to have more accidents. For some strange reason, and I've never been able to get a satisfactory answer to the question, there are some people that simply have accidents and there are simply people who do not. I I don't have an explanation for it. It simply is a statistical fact. Another factor that will impact your auto insurance premium is where you live. Now, this one gets people really pissed off, and I understand that, because where you live, why should that have any impact on the premium you're paying for your auto insurance? I get it. It's frustrating, because it shouldn't have any impact. Here's why it does. 
there are certain areas where there are, let's just say, more claims. There might be more break-ins to vehicles. There might be some congestion in, or just some odd intersections in a particular area. And because of that, there are simply more accidents. There are simply more claims. It stinks. It's really not cool. But again, it's statistically accurate. There are certain areas that have less accidents than others. So in the trying to keep everything as fair as possible, the insurance industry will charge more in areas where it sees more claims and less in areas that it sees fewer claims. I guess it depends on which side of that you're on. You may love it, you may hate it. The next factor is your marital status. Marital status can impact your driving rate because again, this is all based on math, Someone who is married does tend to have less frequent accidents than someone who is not. I don't know. It's just the way it is, I suppose. So it could be that people that are single are driving more frequently or they're trying to show off or they're just who the heck knows. I don't know. I'm not an actuary. All I can tell you is what the data shows. Versus someone who's married, maybe they're driving around with their kids in the car, so they're being a little more careful. Who knows? Just, just understand that marital status does have an impact on driving premium, on your insurance premium. Another factor is your gender, male or female. Now, this can get complicated these days because there are some people that are non-binary. However, depending on your state, and a lot of these are state-specific, your gender can be used for determining your auto insurance premium, and in other states, they cannot. Similarly, credit can be used in some states to help determine what your insurance premium is going to be for auto insurance versus not. Some carriers in certain states will look at credit if they're allowed to, and in other states where they're not allowed to, they simply don't look at that as a factor. Okay, so now we have an idea of what are some of the factors that insurance carriers will look at when they're determining what your insurance premium is going to be. Now, We started this program out today by talking about the fact that the premiums are getting higher and higher and higher and higher, and we want to know why. Now, there's a long list of reasons, so hang in there with me. I'll try and go through the main ones with you. The first one has to do with there being a rising cost of vehicle repair. What does that mean? I think the best way to explain this is by analogy. Let's say 10, 15 years ago, maybe even longer, you would have a fender bender. Your bumper would cost, I don't know, three, four hundred bucks to buff out, maybe five, six hundred bucks to replace. They would replace it in a day or two. The insurance company would pay the body shop five, six hundred dollars, maybe two or three days of rental car coverage, and you were back on the road. Now, that same fender bender, unfortunately, we're looking at a very expensive piece of equipment. This this bumper now has cameras and radar and LIDAR and all sorts of additional sensors that number one, cost significantly more than just that plain bumper used to. Plus, we can't just have any Joe Schmo install that bumper. It has to be a licensed, trained technician that knows how to go about installing and balancing and calibrating and testing out all of those sensors in the vehicle. So what used to be a small fender bender for a couple of bucks now is thousands and thousands of dollars. And the crazy thing is it's still taking longer than it used to to get parts. I I can't explain it. Again, I can only tell you what the data shows. The data shows that it is taking on average several weeks, weeks to get simple parts for cars. I wish I knew why, it just is. Now, you might wonder, well, so what? Well, that's additional rental car coverage that the insurance company is paying out. And every day that that car is not out on the road, it is costing the insurance company money. And if it's costing the insurance company money, you guessed it, that's going to trickle down to you in higher premium. The next factor that might be, not might be, the next factor that is impacting the auto insurance rate increases that we're seeing have to do with a dramatic, not a little one, but a dramatic increase in the frequency and the severity of accidents. I know, what's that all about? It is true, since the pandemic, the number of accidents and the severity of the accidents has almost gone up threefold, literally threefold. It's, it, you want to laugh and say, what the hell's wrong with everybody? Start, oh, did you forget how to drive during that period of time when you weren't driving during the pandemic? 
All we know is that the severity the, the, and the frequency of accidents that are happening have gone way, way up. And again, makes sense. If the frequency has gone up and the severity has gone up on auto, ins- on auto accidents, that's going to mean the insurance carriers are paying out more in claims. And you guessed it, that is going to trickle right back down to your auto insurance premium. When we come back, I'm going to get into the next section that we are seeing that is one of the culprits to the increasing cost of auto insurance. And we'll get that in just two minutes. California's insurance market can be challenging, but Sussman Insurance Agency knows the way. Trusted for two generations in home, auto, and personal insurance. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Navigate with confidence. Hello, hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour. Thank you again for being with us and welcome back. Remember, if you want to reach us, you can go ahead and just dial pound 250 keyword insurance, and that will get you through to someone that can help. Before the break, we were talking about why our auto insurance premiums are increasing. And I gave you a list of a few of them, and I'm going to give you some more now. All right, ready, set, go. The next reason that we're seeing increases in premium have to do with medical cost increases. Well, no one listening is going to say, what do you mean that doctors aren't costing more than they used to? Uh, Yeah, they are. Doctors are costing more and all of that cost trickles down. I'll give you another example. I always go back to what used to be, right? Used to be, if someone were to get involved in a minor accident, maybe they have mild whiplash. Again, not a physician. I'm just giving you an example of what I would see. They would go to the chiropractor. They would go to some physical therapy. Those would cost $20, $30 a visit. They would do that for several weeks until they were better. And then on, on we go. Now, what people are doing when they're in an accident, if they're hurt, they're getting massive pain treatments, meaning things such as epidurals are happening. And again, an epidural is something that is used for major pain, as you probably have heard from heard about it mostly for women that are giving birth. They are giving these to people to help deal with severe pain after auto insurance accidents. Well, as you've guessed it, Epidurals cost a heck of a lot more than physical therapy for $20 or $30 a visit. And yes, as I've said now, like a broken record, those costs will trickle down to you and your insurance premium. That's just the way it works. Let's get to another one. This one I think we can all relate to. There is an increase in distracted driving. Okay, now distracted driving, we've heard about it, we know what it means. Don't text and drive. Okay, we got that part, but that's really not all there is to it. Distracted driving is not just about texting on your phone. Yes, that's a big part of it. However, what people are doing, and again, I, I can't explain why, the numbers just show it, they're simply not paying as much attention when they're driving. Maybe they're on the phone because they're so engaged in work that they're heavily, heavily involved in work, talk, 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 and their mind is just somewhere else. Again, it's distraction from the fact that you are actually moving a several thousand pound piece of metal down the street. And when you're distracted doing that, things can happen and things are happening. So accidents are, are happening because of distracted driving. Keep in mind again, if you take something away from this, Distracted driving is not just texting. And yes, of course, it's scrolling through your social media feed and all that other, all that other stuff as well. But it also has to do with just simply not focusing on your driving. It just has to do with not being present when you're driving. All right, what's next up? Well, we've got all the usual suspects. Now let's get on to some that you might not have thought of. There has been a major increase in legal costs and litigation costs. Let me give you a little bit more color for that. There is a type of policy that you can purchase on top of other insurance policies called an umbrella policy. It's extra liability coverage. It's the type of coverage you would get if you were looking to protect personal assets and the limits for your auto insurance, for example, were not sufficient to do that. Those policies would come and do come in in increments of a million dollars, one million, two million, three million, something like that. And they used to be fairly inexpensive, two, three hundred dollars a year. Not bad, because let's face it, how often do you have a claim that's going to you're going to be found negligent for millions of dollars? Chances are not very often. Well, guess what? 
we are having what are called nuclear verdicts. And a nuclear verdict is in the millions. These are what we also consider policy limits on insurance policies, and they're seeing them more and more and more frequently. Why is this? Well, if a jury decides you're going to be that the accident you caused, for example, hurt someone enough, maybe they're afraid to drive, maybe they have physical injury, whatever the case may be, it's up to the jury to decide how much they're going to be paying in damages. And for whatever reason, again, I'm just telling you what it is, those the 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 um, frequency of those nuclear verdicts have gone way, way up. I've personally seen it happen. I've seen policyholders that all of a sudden have had their umbrella policies pay out one million dollars. That that was unheard of. That's that's I don't want to say ridiculous because I don't want to generalize. All I can tell you in all I can tell you is that in 30 years, I can count the number of times on one hand I've seen a policyholder that has had a million dollar payout. And guess what? It's only in the last couple of years. It just wasn't happening. And it has not been a slow increase. It's not like 200,000, 300,000 before, and now we've worked up to a million. There was an average cost. There were average numbers. All of those were calculated into what insurance premiums were based on. And then boom, all of a sudden, these massive verdicts were coming out for millions of dollars. And you guessed it. Those prices are being passed down in premiums because they're being paid out as claims which by the way, that's sort of how insurance works, right? You pay a premium based on the likelihood and your claim frequency. So there you have it. Here's one you might not have thought of. The incidence of fraudulent claims is on the rise. Now, what's what's that all about? Last time I checked, the economy is supposed to be pretty good right now, even though no one can quite understand why it's, it's good. However, the, the likelihood of being involved in a claim that involves fraud has gone up more. I don't have the exact statistic. Last th the last thing I read, I think, was almost twice as much as in, the, as in the last 10 years, which might not sound like a lot, but it is significant. Double is a lot, <laughs> right? Double is a lot. And a fraudulent claim, not only does it pay out when it shouldn't, but there's also typically major litigation costs that ensue, major repercussions in order to be able to prove that there was fraud and it has to go to court. It's, it's not usually just a matter of, oh, that's not true. Oh, you're right. You got me. And they walk away. So there's either major costs on that factor or worse than that, the claim simply gets paid out when it shouldn't. And all that does is skew the statistics, skew the numbers, skew the numbers that the insurance carriers are using to, pro to appropriately come up with your premium, which guess what? More claims paid out, higher premiums. It just works that way. Let's take another quick break. When we come back, I'm going to talk to you about urbanization and how that can impact your auto insurance premium. Sussman Insurance Agency, trusted for generations in navigating California's complex insurance market. For help with homeowners, fair plan, auto insurance, and more, call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com, your friend in the insurance industry. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman. Remember, you can reach someone at pound 250, keyword insurance, anytime if you want to get some help with your insurance. Right before the break, we were talking about reasons that our insurance premiums, specifically our auto insurance premiums, have been going up. In the second half of the program, I'm going to be going over ways that you can actually save on your premium, how you can try and go, go against these factors to try and save money, how you can counterbalance what's happening. So if you're only getting the first half of the show, go grab the podcast or jump on YouTube, get the other half, because I'm going to help you with certain ways that you can counterbalance these things that have caused your insurance premium to increase. So I mentioned urbanization. So Urbanization and traffic congestion is causing higher insurance premiums. Why is this? Well, when there's congestion and there's traffic, there's more claims. When there's more cars on the road, there's more claims. All of that translates into higher auto insurance premium. Next up, we have the cost of vehicles increasing. 
Now, all of vehicle costs are increasing with inflation. However, since we're seeing the advent of a lot more hybrids and electric vehicles, these cars are costing a friggin' fortune to repair, and they're taking even longer to get parts for. So, you want to hate on electric cars? There's your reason, because it's dramatically impacting everyone's auto insurance premium, and especially people that are buying those types of vehicles. Labor costs are higher as well. We talked about this earlier when we talked about the trained technician that has to go about balancing the bumper and the sensors and the LIDAR and the radar and all the other stuff and the partridge and the pear tree that's attached to the back of your car on the bumper. Well, those folk are a lot more expensive than what used to be a lower trained, lower skilled person that would just put your bumper on. Again, those costs are just They just trickle down to your premium. Next, we have consumers have a desire for more coverage and less out of pocket. Now, this is a frustrating one because this is totally self-serving. We're, as a society, we're going the wrong way. Instead of looking at insurance as being, okay, that's there in case something really, really bad happens. For some reason, we're going the other way. We want to have our insurance pay for everything from the little ding to the little dang to the little bumper to the little anything. We just want to be able to file an insurance claim. And the more insurance claims that are filed, big surprise, the higher the rates are going to be. So as much as I hate to say it because it irks everyone, we are doing this to ourselves on some level. There is a general consensus that we want to have our auto insurance pay for more, 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 more. We don't like high deductibles. We don't like to have any reason to not have our insurance company pay when there's a claim. That's just societal. It's cultural. Whatever the case is right now, especially in California, but it's it's also being seen in many other states as a general trend. You're starting to see options for additional types of coverage. You're looking you're starting to see um, options for additional types of deductibles and ways to get your insurance policy to pay out more than less. And again, this is going to and is having an impact on premiums. Depending on the state, you're also seeing pretty significant legislative challenges for your auto insurance premium. Insurance carriers have to go to the Department of Insurance and prove that the rates they're looking for are justified. They literally have to show in math, look, I need XYZ premium, otherwise I go out of business. And the Department of Insurance looks at it, does the math, it's not political, they just look at the math, and if it's true, if it adds up, they get the rate increase. If it doesn't, they don't. It's pretty simple, and it really is pretty much that black and white. In certain states, there's legislation that makes that process take a long time, a long time like months or years. And what that means is you end up so backlogged in trying to get the rate that you're looking to get, by the time you get it, you're already behind another two years or three years. And that turns into a perpetual rate of rate increases going up, 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 because you're playing catch up. We're also seeing auto insurance premiums go up in part because of natural disasters. We don't think about it, but a rainstorm or a thunderstorm or a tornado or a hurricane or a flood, those things impact vehicles too, not just houses. And the auto insurance industry is definitely, definitely seeing an impact from that. That one was a surprise to me because it's obvious. It's just not something I had thought about before. When you think about climate change, You don't think about, oh, it's going to make my auto insurance premium higher, right? Who thinks that? No, they think that's going to make my property insurance premium higher. Turns out the vehicles get damaged by hail the size of baseballs just as quickly as the house does. Finally, for today, I want to mention the fact that there is a high number of uninsured drivers right now. Somewhere in the neighborhood in California, at any rate, is 15% of drivers are uninsured. Now, that's a little over the national average. The national average is a few points or a few half points lower than that. And why does that have an impact on you? Well, if you have an accident with someone that is uninsured, chances are you may have uninsured motorist coverage. Uninsured motorist coverage is going to still pay that claim for you. However, the insurance carrier has no way to subrogate. It has no way to recoup those dollars that it paid on your behalf. Instead, they're just kind of stuck. They're going to have to pay that claim, even if the other driver was completely at fault. Whereas, if the other driver was at fault 
and there was an insurance policy in force, they would be able to subrogate against the other insurance company or the other insurance company would simply pay the claim and it would not impact your premium. And in the lar- in the larger scheme of things, we would not be seeing auto insurance rate increases the way we are right now. So that's in summary, some of the factors that have been impacting the, raise, the, the rising costs of auto insurance across the country. Across the country, everyone is seeing this. Everyone is feeling this. You can't turn on the news. You can't go online and search without seeing people talking and screaming and having a fit about why is my auto insurance premium so high. Hopefully, this was a little bit helpful for you to help you understand why this is happening, how this is happening. And when we come back, I'm going to spend the second half of the show helping you countermand those issues that are happening and to try and find ways to get your auto insurance premium to go back down or at least lower than it's going up to right now. Are you feeling lost in the search for the right insurance? Making call after call, only to find no one willing to go that extra mile for you? At Sussman Insurance Agency, we understand that frustration, and we're here to change your experience. Where others see obstacles, we see opportunities. While many might shy away from jumping through hoops, at Sussman Insurance Agency, we're prepared to leap. Reach out to Sussman Insurance Agency at 877-411-5200. Visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com or email sales at sussmaninsurance.com. Let's uncover the insurance solutions you deserve. Sussman Insurance Agency, going the extra mile every time. So we spent the first part of the show talking about why auto insurance rates have been going up. And now I'm going to give you the keys to the castle. I'm going to help you figure out how you can get those rates back down. Now, let me preface this by saying auto insurance rates are going to cost more than they have in the past, period, end of story, mic drop. So if your goal is to pay what you were paying six months, a year, two years, three years, four years ago, get over it, it's not gonna happen. Things cost more money, they just do. Everything costs more money, go to the movies, go to the market, do anything. Everything costs more money, cars cost more money. Friggin', I mean, I don't even know where to, where to, where to stop. I can't think of anything that's not more expensive and dramatically so than it was in the past and the more recent past at that. So with that in mind, understand that you are going to be paying more for auto insurance than you previously had been. That's just the way the world works. Don't shoot the messenger. However, I'm going to give you some tips on ways that you can try and lower your premium. All right, you ready? Sit down, sharpen the pencil or get ready to take some notes. By the way, if you have comments on any of this, feel free to reach out. Just dial pound 250 keyword insurance and let me know. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment. If you're listening to the podcast, leave me some feedback. Shoot me an email at questions at insurancehour.com. I am always happy to hear from everybody. I'm always learning. You're always learning. Together, we'll try and do what we can to make this situation with auto insurance premiums going up, up, up a little easier, easier, easier. Okay. So first one, as much as I hate to say it, you should try and shop around. Now, I know in most markets, specifically in California, you really can't shop around much for auto insurance. I call it hunting versus shopping. And that's because there is such a limited marketplace for companies that are offering auto insurance that it's more hunting. With shopping, you look at this, 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 and you pick one over the other. With hunting, ready, aim, fire. If you can get one, you keep it and you're happy you have it. And that really is the California marketplace for auto insurance right now. So understand that although that's not the norm everywhere, if you're listening in California, that is going to be what you're facing. Other places might be a little easier. Some places might be a lot easier. So shop around. Be sure you're comparing apples to apples with the fundamental coverages. Not all policies are created equal, so you can't always do that. However, be sure that you have at least the basics listed correctly and similarly when you're comparing. The next thing you can do is to increase your vehicle's deductible. Now, I know you've heard this one a million times. Oh, sure. Just raise the deductible so I have to pay out more money and then you'll charge me a lower premium. Yeah, that's how it works. Higher deductible means lower premium. Now, understand again, you do not want to put in a claim for a small accident. 
especially if it's your fault, because you're going to end up falling into a different underwriting classification. You're going to look like more of a risk to the insurance company. And guess what that's going to do? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Raise your insurance premium. So you don't want to do that. Remember, we need to change culturally how we deal with insurance and understand that it's not there for every single incident that we may encounter in life. It's there for the really, really big ones. And that's what you want to be sure that you have coverage for. And since you don't want to file those tiny claims anyway, there's no reason to carry deductibles that would show that would allow you to file them. So check out those deductibles. I know it sounds horrific, but that could be some serious money you're saving. And then leading me right to my next suggestion, drive careful. One of the reasons that, as we discussed earlier, we're seeing higher auto insurance premiums is for the simple fact that we're having more accidents. And for whatever reason that is, just drive safely. Because if you're driving safer and other people are driving safer, there will be less accidents. And less accidents means fewer claims. You know where I'm going with this. Eventually, we will all reap the benefits of having lower auto insurance premium than we do today. And it starts with you. So drive safer. Try and be less distracted. Try and be more present. It does pay off. It will mean actual money in your pocket, not to mention you can avoid an accident, which, and let's remember, that is the goal. That's the ideal, not to have the claim to begin with. If that happened more, all of our auto insurance premiums would be going down. The next thing to look for are discounts. Oh, we love our discounts. Every carrier has their own discounts. Oh, I got a discount because my kids got good grades in school. Oh, I got a discount because I'm a member of this club. Oh, I get a discount because I'm a teacher. I got a discount because I graduated from college. Oh, my God. There are more discounts out there than, than I can even imagine. And can I tell you a little secret? Psst. Most of them are garbage. Most of them, I, I don't think, are even based on real statistics. I think they're more marketing than statistically allowing for lower discounts. Now, I'm giving you that as a personal opinion. I'm not giving you that based on any actuarial numbers. However, money is money. So give your insurance agent or broker a call. Call the call them up and say, hey, I want you to email me. That's always a good thing because it makes them really work. I want you to email me a list of every single solitary discount that my auto insurance policy offers. I don't care if there's one for women only and I'm a guy. I just want, let me figure that out. Please give me a list, a comprehensive list of every single auto insurance discount that is available for my auto insurance policy. Just ask for it. They'll give it to you. It's a little extra work. They might not love doing it, but they will do it because that is their job. If you're calling the carrier directly, they'll do it because, again, they have to. If you're calling a broker, they're going to moan and say, oh, I'm doing the best you can already, blah, blah, blah. Say, okay, humor me. Get that list. We're not infallible, and you want to be sure you're not missing anything. The next thing to check on is something called telematics. Now, this is state-specific. Some states don't allow it. Telematics have to do with keeping track of how you're driving. If you're having hard braking, if you are doing fast accelerating, hard turns, things like that, then your auto insurance premium will be impacted by that because guess what? People that do those things have, yes, yes, more accidents, which mean higher premium. And the opposite is true. If you're not doing those things, then your rate is going to be lower. The next thing, again, state specific is your credit score. Now, I know people get frustrated with this one. Then why in the heck does my insurance have to be impacted by my credit? What in the world does one thing have to do with the other? If I pay my bills on time, what does that matter? What what does it matter if I have credit card debt? Why should that have any impact whatsoever on what I am paying for auto insurance? I got to tell you, I get it. But here's the frustration. Somehow it does. It's, it's, it's almost a magical thing. It's kind of crazy. If you look across probably all of the states in the country, minus maybe two, they can show a direct correlation, not a causation, correlation between credit score and driving record. It's insane. I could come up with it. It, it, It's probably some thesis that uh, that I could write if I was going back to school again to try and figure out why. 
Just understand that for whatever reason, and it's not a small one, it's a dramatic correlation. There are certain states that will look at your credit score, and that's the primary factor in determining your frequent, your likelihood of having an accident. It's, it's really kind of bonkers, but it's true. So to that effect, keep an eye on your credit if you're in one of those states. Pay off some of that debt if you can, refinance it if you can, whatever you do, don't have late pays because then you start spiraling down. Your credit falls, your auto insurance premium goes up, everything goes south quickly. So keep track of that. The next thing is if you're driving an older car, look to see about lowering the limits and lowering the coverage that you have on that car. And I'll give you an example. If you've got a car and it's only worth five, six thousand dollars, you shouldn't be paying premium on that car where in three or four years you've paid the value of the car minus your deductible. Doesn't usually make sense. There's personal choice for this, of course, right? It's up to you. However, as a general rule, it probably doesn't have to happen. So look at the older cars, see about either removing physical damage coverage, maybe just leaving fire and theft, or just removing physical damage coverage altogether. The next one is to just review your policy. This is a funny one. I've been in this business for 30 years. And when clients come to us and they ask us for, they want us to review their policies, shop it around, all that fun stuff. I can look at a policy and I can tell you in three seconds if this client is coming from someone that has an agent, if they're coming from a company directly, and I can tell you if either one of them are worth anything. Because there are such small details that I can look at and see in a policy if someone has really been paying attention or not. So take the time, reach out to your agent or broker, or if it turns out to be the insurance carrier directly, reach out to them and say, hey, hey, let's go over my coverages. Let's be sure that I'm not missing something. Let's be sure that there's no discount that I'm missing. Let's be sure that there's not some type of potential protection that I'm looking for. Let's be sure that everything is the way it should be. Review your policy. You'll never, you, you never know unless you check. And policies change just like you change. You think that the policy you bought 20 years ago from your insurance company is exactly the same as it is today? I can almost guarantee you it isn't. Do you know what's changed? I bet you don't. Check it out. The next thing is go on an auto pay or a pay in full plan. Now, this can be difficult as we're the whole premise of this conversation is that auto insurance rates have gone up. And now I'm turning around and saying, oh, by the way, pay it in full. A lot of insurance companies will give you a discount for paying in full or if not a discount, they're not going to charge you interest or payment fees if you're making payments on them especially in states like California, where auto insurance premiums are high and there is a lack of availability, definitely go on auto pay because you do not want that policy to lapse. You are all but guaranteed to be paying more getting another policy when you finally can. The next one is to check out other options with carriers, again, state specific. Some will give you a policy that is based on a pay per mile option. So if you're really not driving a lot, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, really, really not driving a lot, it might make sense for you to have one of these pay per mile policies. And it is just what it sounds like. You are paying based on how many miles you drive. Now, the problem with it is if you're not driving a lot one month and the next month you drive a lot and, and it goes all around, sometimes it can average out to where you're paying more than if you just had a standard policy. So it's something to look at. Next up, and you've heard this one before, putting your auto insurance policy together with another policy with the same insurance company. Now, it's not just home and auto. Not everyone owns a home. A condominium owner, a renter's policy. If you're renting an apartment, you can get an, an inexpensive renter's policy and by doing that, get a discount on your auto insurance that could darn near pay for the renter's insurance and give you a discount of more money off of your auto insurance policy. I mean, it's, it's crazy that sometimes the discount is larger than the premium. Some states also have the option for you to take what's called a defensive driving course. These are courses you can take either online or in person. Does anyone do anything in person anymore? I don't know. I assume they're out there somewhere. And it's usually a day 
and they will sit and go over some best practices for driving. Hey, when's the last time you learned how to drive? Really? When can you even remember sitting in a classroom being given the rules of the road? I bet you can't. Let me tell you something. Sometimes a little refresher can go a long way. Truly, it really can. I've got some more options and some more suggestions for you. We'll talk to you about them in just a moment when we come back. Master the California Insurance Marketplace with Sussman Insurance Agency. Two generations of insight make us your ideal ally. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com for information on your insurance policies now. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Insurance Hour. Thank you again for being with me today. We are just going through some ways to save money on your auto insurance. Remember, if you have questions, you can reach me at 559-656-0317 or dial pound 250, keyword insurance, and you'll get connected to someone that can help you. Let's go over a few more ways that we can save money on our automobile insurance. That is if you want to. I mean, if you like to pay higher premiums, then you don't need to be listening to any of this. However, if you are looking to save some money, then you can definitely listen up. And if you have missed any part of this show, remember, it is available as a podcast and on YouTube. Just search for Insurance Hour and you shall find it. The next thing to pay attention to is the vehicle you're driving. Look for safer vehicles. Remember J.D. Powers? They do these reports on what cars are safe and what cars aren't. It makes a difference. Cars that are more, um, let's try that again. Cars that are less dangerous cost less to insure as a general rule. Now, of course, there are exceptions, but in general, if a car is less likely for people inside to get injured and it is less likely to get smashed up in an accident and cost a fortune to repair, it is going to cost less to insure. I know that's a little bit complicated. Just remember when you're shopping around to get your auto policy or you're checking into discounts or you're doing all these things that I'm suggesting, keep in mind the vehicle you're driving does have an impact. And by all means, if you're searching to buy a new car or a used car, check with your insurance agent or broker and ask them, hey, I'm looking at XYZ car. What's it going to cost me? There's nothing wrong with that. You might be surprised for one reason or another, there might be a significant difference between the cost of vehicles and what your insurance premium will be. Even strangely enough, if some vehicles cost the same amount of money, one might cost less and one might cost more to insure. So check on that, find out, information is power. Now we talked about this in the past today about filing small claims and the general feeling that people have that they just don't want to pay anything. They just want to be able to have everybody, every insurance company pay every single claim that happens, period, end of story. And that's getting us into trouble because it's getting us into a position where we're going to be paying more and more and more and more because we're getting the carrier to pay out more and more and more and more. And I tell you this under the auspice of my suggestion is to not file small claims. Now, this goes right against what I just said, which is everyone's trying to get the insurance carriers to pay less and less. I'll give you an example. Years ago, here we go again. Years ago, you used to see people with deductibles on their vehicle of $100. $50, even $0. So literally, if they had the tiny little scratch happen on their car, if they had anything like that happen, it wouldn't cost them a penny to go to the insurance company and have them fix it. Well, that's not going to end well in the long run. And of course it didn't because people were doing just that. There was no reason not to file those claims to keep their cars looking pristine and rather than pay it out of pocket. So they would file those claims and over time, deductibles started getting higher because premiums were getting higher and we're literally just at the epitome of that right now. Deductibles are having to get so much higher just to keep up with the fact that people are putting in so many claims that are costing so much money and those premiums in those increases are being passed down to us. Now, here's one you might not have thought of. I know, you're not like me. You don't lie in bed at night and think about insurance. Yes, I'll admit it, I do. I think about it when I wake up in the morning while I'm having an espresso. I think about it while I'm munching on something during the day and I think about it when I'm getting ready for bed and brushing my teeth. 
I can't help it. It's who I am. It's uh, love it or not. That is me. You don't do that. I do that. So let me give you something that you might not have thought of doing. And you're going to slap yourself in the face and say, why didn't I think of that? It's so simple. Are you ready? Call your insurance company. Call your insurance broker and tell them, I need to save money. Not what discounts are out there. I need to save money on my auto insurance premium. What are my options? Stop. Right there. And wait. And wait for an answer. And wait for options. There are always, always going to be options. Some you might not like. Some might be inappropriate. It might have to do with lowering coverage to a level that's not appropriate for you. It might mean removing coverage from a vehicle that eh, you probably want to keep coverage on. It might be something that's not appropriate. But the point is, sometimes when we realize that we're not the experts, the agent's the expert, the broker's the expert, the insurance company direct, maybe, is the expert. Keep in mind that if you give them the right instructions, they will give you the right answers. If you call up and say, hey, am I paying? Is there any way I can save money on their car insurance? They'll say, nah, you're doing the best you can. It's a hard market. Oh, yeah, bro. Okay, see you later. Bye, bye. And you're done. No, that's not what you do. You need to pick up the phone or send an email and tell them. Tell them. Don't ask. Tell them, say, I must save money on my car insurance. What are my options? Period. And if they say none, say, no, no, I know there's options. I I just want you to give them all to me. Every option that there could be, whether it be raising limits, I'm sorry, lowering limits, raising deductibles, changing coverage, give me all my options. Pretend I'm five. Explain it to me like I'm an idiot. Tell it to me. Make them work for it at least you're going to know exactly what is costing what. And you might be pleasantly surprised to find that there are some things that you are able to do that will enable you to save some money on that premium. The next one is, and again, it's state specific. It's called a certified automobile, a certified auto program. All right, what does that mean? Now, one of the factors we talked about impacting our auto insurance has to do with how many miles you drive. Now, this is always a fun story. I love, I love this one. I'll, I'll admit it. It used to be you would tell, ask someone, what's your, how many miles a year do you drive? They're like, I don't know, 10,000, 12,000, 15,000, whatever it is. Okay, you put that in, it becomes part of the proposal, and you move forward. Then people got sneaky, and they said, I realize that the more miles I tell them I'm driving, the higher my premium. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell them I used the car less. And they did. They started saying, eh, it's 8,000 miles a year, 6,000 miles a year. It got to the point where a few years ago, people would call in and they were so well trained on how to lie. We would, we would answer the phone and they would say, hi, I'd like to get a quote for auto insurance. I barely drive the car, maybe 1,000 miles a year. And they would stop. And I would always chuckle to myself and, and think, Really? A thousand miles a year? I don't care. Okay, I'm in California, so of course we know that's laughable here. I don't think that's possible anywhere in the country these days. I really don't. So what can you do to get around that problem? Well, the insurance carriers had to just take people at their word. And guess what happened? The numbers didn't crunch because automobile policies were being written at a thousand miles a year, 2000 miles a year. Claim frequency was happening with the reality of 10, 12, 15,000 miles a year. And guess what happened? Yes, yes, yes. The rates started going up because the claim frequency and severity was not matching the predicted values because people were not giving the right information. So the insurance company said, all right, we're going to start doing a little bit of math on our own. So first they started saying, what do you do? You drive to work? Please give us your work address. And they would take your work address and your home address, do a little bit of math and say, okay, based on the fact that you drive eight miles each way to work, that's 16 miles a day, even if you don't drive anywhere else, like to the market or on the weekend, that's going to equal, I don't know what it is, 11,000 miles a year. 
So they, they started to dig themselves out of that trust the consumer hole. Hey, guys, we're all to blame. Let's face it. It's not our fault, but this is how we got here. So that helped. It helped a lot. And it helped so much that the insurance carriers in general were able to better predict loss and they were better able to price their products that they thought, you know what? If I can get an even more accurate number, I'm willing to offer a discount because at the end of the day, the carrier just wants accurate information because if it has accurate information, it can give their best price and they can win the business, right? They can earn your or earn the business. So there's this concept that came out called certified auto miles. And what that means is you report to the insurance company how much your odometer is on one day, you do it in 90 days again. If you go to get an oil change, there are partnerships with a lot of companies where they will report that information and the insurance company can pull it up automatically. The system will find it. It is kind of creepy, but it works. And it's really easy. So you, you call the agent, you say, I want to know if I can get that certified auto thing. And they're going to say, what the heck? How do you know about that? Okay. And they'll punch a few buttons in the computer and the computer will look up your VIN number and it's able to connect to a database from car dealerships, from um, repair shops, all sorts of things like that for when you were there last and what the odometer was, even when you had your smog check done and do a little bit of math and it'll be able to see roughly how much you're driving based on the odometer changing over a certain period of time between those check-ins. And they're able to give you not only a more accurate premium, they're willing to pay you a discount for doing it. Now that, my friends, is a win-win-win for everybody. With that, I want to thank you all so much for staying with me today, listening to why our premiums are higher and what we can do about it. Remember, we record live every Friday morning from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific time. Replay on any podcast channel you can possibly find, any pocket channel, any podcast aggregator you can find. We are also on YouTube. Call anytime and leave your question on our voicemail at 559-656-0317. Email at questions at insurancehour.com. Or if you happen to have these things, they're called cell phones. All you have to do is dial pound 250. And when it asks, give the keyword insurance and you will get transferred to someone that can help you. And we are here to help you. We are here to try and do the right thing for everybody. Help people understand how they can best utilize their insurance policies and understand what it is that they have. And with that, I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 6560317 educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time this is insurance hour this show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa